the coalition of northern groups representing the vast equation of rights and civil organizations in northern Nigeria has taken stock of events unfolding since the arrest and repatriation of Namdi Kanu, the fugitive leader of the outlawed indigenous people of Biafra. We especially note with deep sense of concern the unrelenting desperation by certain interest groups in the southeast to subvert the due process of justice and temper with judicial processes since Kanu's arraignment. This level of desperation to abort Kanu's trial for masterminding series of mindless violence and separatism through the force of arms and terrorist, act, terrorist tactics got to a peak with the recent visit by a certain highly respected Igbo grades led by a 93-year-old First Republic parliamentarian and minister of aviation, Mbazulike Amechi, to demand from President Muhammad Buhari his unconditional release. Of particular concern is the president's ambiguous, careless response in which he tended to make a specific promise to consider that heinous and unpatriotic demand rooted in a history of evolving terror. Profile of crimes. From 2017 to 2020, at the peak of IPOB's dangerous campaigns, Kanu had instigated the killing of more than 1,230 Northern Nigerian citizens living in parts of the Southeast. Several millions worth of businesses, properties, and valuable assets belonging to Northerners and citizens of other regions were destroyed across the southeastern cities on the instructions of Nandikanu within the same period. From early 2020 to date, Kanu had instigated the proscribed IPO to continue to mastermind mindless attacks and destruction of national security assets, democratic symbols, <coughs> and killings of about 400 security personnel and orphaning their families. The atrocities, uh, the atrocities got to a height when Kanu infiltrated and hijacked the NSAS protests and openly incited the Carlos dehumanizing cannibalistic murder of about 250 security personnel and the raising of hundreds of police stations, security facilities, and private businesses of Nigerians from other parts of the country. His incitement to violence and destruction in the wake of the NSAS protests replayed long practice tactics in the form of more coordinated attacks against Northerners and against agents and symbols of the federal government of Nigeria in the southeast and parts of the south-south. Unprovoked evictions, attacks and killings of northerners in various parts of the south resulted from the hate campaigns and propaganda being conducted by Kanu and other regional and ethnic agitators. Since early 2021, Kanu continued to play a major role in the ongoing insurgency in southeastern Nigeria as his eastern security network battled the nation's security forces. Throughout these years, the Igbo leaders who are today all over the place seeking his unconditional release never deemed it necessary to call him to order or create any distance from his atrocious activities against the state and collective mayhem against Nigerians and the North. Our observations. The latest desperation by the Igbo leaders to free Kanu and Buhari's disturbing pledge to consider the plea inadvertently leads to the following inevitable observations. One, the composition of the Igbo elders group has vindicated the position we have espoused since 2017 that the diabolical scheme planned and exhibited in the criminal actions of Kanu and IPO is fully supported morally 
and politically by the vast majority of the pliant Igbo elders, elites, politicians, religious leaders, traditional rulers, business persons, and the larger population of the Southwest. Two, the group's demand and the president's promise represent nothing short of a grand conspiracy to condone and impose an agenda of destruction and collective mayhem seen in the several unreasonable and unacceptable actions that have been perpetuated against the Nigerian state and people by Kano. Three, the demand and Buhari's disturbing promise to consider it without minding the number of soldiers, policemen, and thousands of other innocent Nigerians already murdered and, present, and presently physically threatened by IPOP terrorists on the express orders of Kanu suggest a lack of sense of responsibility on the part of those in power. Four, Buhari's response to the Igbo leader's demand could also signal a dangerous endorsement of the amassing of the huge number of arms already imported by IPOP terrorists and their sponsors, which are already being used to cause mayhem across the country. Number five, the president's body dance towards acceding to the demands for Kanu's release suggests that he has lost the statesmanship and courage to uphold the universal principle of separation of powers between the executive and the judiciary. Number six, this has also further exposed the extent of complicity and docility of our clerics and other community leaders who were in the forefront of urgent tolerance from northerners when they came under incessant attacks but could not find the void but could not find their voice to speak today. Resolutions. In view of the above stated facts and observations, the CNG hereby resolves, one, to warn that any attempt by the president to accede to the demand to release without prosecuting and punishing Kanu will inadvertently reduce Nigeria to a completely lawless state where criminals of all shades will commit crimes against the country and then ask their traditional rulers and other regional or tribal leaders to press for their release. Two, when President, we want President Buhari to reclaim his statesmanship by refusing to be cajoled into interfering with the standard principle of separation of powers and independence of the judiciary. Number three, we warned that the North would no longer remain idle when its people are deliberately targeted and massacred while the perpetrators are shielded by criminal tribal bygodes who pose as leaders. <clears throat> Number four, we warned President Buhari that the North has today realized that he places more premium on the pursuit for votes and political popularity for his party than he does for the sanctity of lives of northerners and security personnel who stake their lives and welfare of families in the service of the nation. Number five, to warn that the North would hold Buhari responsible for the blood of its people unlawfully shed through the activities of Kanu in the event he succumbs to the Igbo pressure to release him. Number five and the last one. Six. Or number six and the last. We demand the arrest and prosecution of those Igbo leaders and any other group <laughs> or individual who are involved in this complicity to get Kanu freed by subverting the cause of justice as accomplice and sponsors of the many atrocities and crimes committed by Kanu against humanity and the Nigerian state. Thank you. This is the end. Like, share, and subscribe.